and do some more work. So I request Professor Garg to continue the session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhattam. Uh, next speaker is Dr. Balvinder Singh. He is a senior principal scientist in CSIR MTech Chandigarh. His expertise in protein sequence analysis, protein structure prediction, its annotation, and the biomolecular modeling. Uh, he is also having the uh, like uh, particularly developing the strategies to derive rules for protein DNA interaction by analysis of existing complex structures and their simulations. They are also like he is also involved in using these skills in the molecular biology, biochemistry, bioinformatics, computational chemistry, proteomics, protein chemistry, and all. With all this, I invite Prof uh, Dr. Balvinder Singh to deliver the talk. Thank you, Dr. Prabha, for the introduction. I thank the organizers also for inviting me to this forum and share our uh, work with the, uh, with the wide audience over here. So, uh, I mean, uh, we do a lot of uh, simulations on the proteins, look at the structure functions and things like, stuff like that. But today, uh, keeping the you know, theme of the workshop in mind, I thought that we'll talk about some computational work that studies that, that we did on binders of you know, immune receptors. I'll share that with you. And uh, how we use the informatics here to you know, analyze the binders, the immune receptors uh, itself. So this study will be you know, divided into two parts. One will be developing uh, I mean, uh, a repertoire for virtually screened uh, small molecules against the immune receptors. Second will be we'll talk about the pipeline to differentiate between binders and non-binders of HLA class two. So this is what is the kind of outline that uh, I have for you. I think uh, everybody knows uh, about the immune receptors. What kind? Of, there are different type of receptors are there. If some, I mean these receptors are very important for the immunology, but if something goes bad. You can, uh, it, uh, I mean, abnormalities related to this can lead to autoimmunity, cancer, and developmental disorders and stuff like that. So, uh, these uh, for against these, we have the therapies which are immune adjuvant therapies, antibodies, synthetic ligand -like based uh, treatments are there, but they are very cost, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they involve very high cost. So, and again, some storage condition this may, makes it very difficult to, you know, to use these therapies uh, over there. So what we are looking at, can we find out some small molecules which can influence the activity of these receptors, alter the biological activity of these receptors? How can we do that? I mean, if we do that, that what are the strategies should be? So this will be a very uh, easy way in, in silico, uh, using in silico techniques, we can try to find out what are the different, you know, uh, 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 recept, uh, these uh, small molecules that can be helpful in interacting with them. So idea was to create a repository of this and to analyze these, what kind of these molecules are there which are available and how do they really, you know, uh, compare with the test molecules. So traditional approaches uh, uh, have a very limited success whereby we look at the traditional chemistry approaches, you develop synthesize a uh, number of molecules, you try to, you know, use these molecules, synthesize them, go for some binding assay, biological assay, then try to f see whether this will work or not. But uh, on the other hand, we have this uh, structure-based virtual screening methods whereby if you have the structures available, you can simply carry out the molecular docking and see what kind of a molecules are going to bind that. This is easy, fast, and quickly can give you some answers Then can give you a lot of information about these small molecules. And it is relatively very simple to have this. And once you have this, I mean, these, these kinds of repositories will be very helpful for any experimental biologist to take these molecules further for uh, development in terms of synthesis, screening, and stuff like that. So keeping that in mind, what we did is we took uh, uh, the structures of the immune receptors, and uh, these are the structures available. Some of them are available, and the, they are co-crystallized with the uh, peptides, and they are very high-resolution structures we found and they are of innate receptors, MSC molecules, close stimulatory molecules, co inhibitory molecules, cytokines, and adhesion molecules. So this, these molecules, they, they are all available in the PDB. If they are not available, we have gone for homology modeling, 
to predict the structure for some of them. You can see these. These are the predicted models, which are colored in red over here. And others were well, taken from the protein data bank. They have been solved by X-ray diffraction. And those informations are available in the uh, protein data bank. And we can, uh, we have the information now about the, once we have the structure, we can find out the information about their ligand binding sites. So after this, when we have, when we look at the structures, we look at the immune receptor type, look at their structures, look at their binding sites. If we, find, if we are able to find uh, peptide already bound in the core crystal structure, that will help us to know what are the binding sites are going to be. Otherwise, we can take the help of like pocket uh, picker or CASP like programs to buy, find the binding groove of that molecule. So what we did is we, uh, we, uh, we took uh, the library of compounds and we uh, simply dog them and try to do dog against all these, you know, 25 uh, the different uh, uh, PDB structures or model structures. And we, based on the docking, we carried out their ranking. We found that uh, we classified them. We found that what are their, you know, uh, free energies, simple thing that you can, uh, that will be available from any molecular docking kind of experiment. The strong efficacies of the screened molecules for the immune receptors. They are, of course, revealed by the negative energies. So all this information for the, uh, these classes of, six classes of these uh, immune receptors, we are able to find. And what we did is we took about 200 high affinity small molecules. We screened them against the, each of the, these receptors. And then what we did is wanted to see that if we uh, take these, uh, you know, uh, molecules, then can we cluster them together? So by using 3D scatter kind of a plot, we try to look at their structural resemblance. So according to their structural resemblance, we put them in different bins. Each bin will have uh, all these structures. So each, all these, uh, this information in 3D you know, plot, is uh, each dot basically represents a structure. And the cluster of the dots represents, or the distance between the dots represents how far they are structurally uh, not connected with each other, how far they are away. So whenever they are based on their root mean scale, value based on their you know, statistical values. If they are very near in terms of structure, they are put in one bin, and they will be easily identified from their zinc identity ID numbers. So after this, what we did is from each bin, we can take their representatives. So based on some kind of a you know, binning uh, with the help of a tenometer similarity coefficient with a cutoff of about four, we are able to find their representative structures, and we can analyze these structures and these bins and we can move further on this for any kind of a development. Also, we computed the ADME properties for these, all these molecules using Swiss ADME and uh, uh, kind of a server. For 5,000 screened small molecules, all these properties are available. They have been put into kind of a repertoire. And uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, I think everybody knows what ADME, ADME properties are. This really takes into account all the physical chemical properties and their drug likeness for this. And uh, majority of them, they were showing kind of a positive for the all uh, drug likeness filters. So this is the kind of a beauty of this. And then we will see maximum number of elements are existing within the intersection of all these filters. These are basically using some kind of a set theory. You can find different filters that we have used. Uh, it is shown in the form of a kind of Venn diagram. Wherever the uh, maximum number of elements exist, they exist at the center of the filter. It means all the different filters, they allow these, uh, you know, uh, molecules to exist as a uh, drug. And once you have this, then you have an overall architecture of the, you know, repertoire that we call MTOR-LIG-DB. And this database was built using Apache HTTP server. MySQL server, if uh, people are interested, they know that this is uh, used at the back, uh, back end to store all of the, all of the data in base information. Front end was HTML and PHP, and this uh, information base was available. This is the whole design, how we did this, uh, collected this information, analyzed this information, and all this information has been put in a, a repertoire or a database called Interlake DB. And further, we analyzed whether within this database, what are the, what is the novelty? Does it have a novelty? So what we, this is, this show, this is the kind of heat map. It represents degrees of uh, smile fragments. Based on the similarity between the uh, uh, 
these prospective ligands which we have chosen and the experimentally tested molecules from the PubChem. So we have taken these elements, uh, uh, experimentally tested molecules from the PubChem, and then we try to see what are their kind of a similarities they have. What we found is mostly this is a green and yellow, it means uh, 10 nanometer coefficient if we take, these are kind of a more than 0.5 uh, kind of a value, which means they are very uh, kind of a, uh, you know, uh, novel, they are not, they have a very low similarity, and structurally comp uh, comparison, uh, this shows that most majority of the structures, majority of the, like uh, only 0.2 of the percent of the, these structures, they uh, exhibited high relatively, high structural similarity, which is showing a nanometer coefficient of 0.5 to 1. Otherwise, it is less than 0.5. So majority of the structures, they are not related to the experimentally tested molecules. So that gives the kind of a novelty and uniqueness to this, you know, database or the virtually screened ligands. So all this uh, information has been put in a kind of a repertoire and it is available from this URL db, and you can just draw a structure and see whether this structure is there or not. If you know the name, if you know the zinc ID, or you want to go by the, uh, you know, particular uh, immune receptor type, you go there and just you can screen through whether uh, these such, any of the such similar molecules or any molecules that you want to extract from there, which are interacting with the co-inhibitory molecules, they can, they can be extracted from there. So this is one of the repositories that have been created for the small molecules which will react with the immune receptors. So this is the kind of summary of the same thing what I have uh, talked about. It has got 200 small molecules for each of the immune targets. Potential novel chemical structures are there, low similarity, estimation of ADMA properties are there, and these are, have been compared with the experimentally tested you know, uh, molecules. And this can be a very effective source for development of small molecules for therapeutic infection, uh, intervention against the immune receptors. So this is uh, the database is open for the you know, experimental biologist or anybody to take it further and then uh, make, uh, go for further development of the small molecules. And then in the second part, we, what we did is we looked, uh, we uh, developed a pay pipeline to differentiate between binders and non-binders of the HLA class two. There are many servers which are available. We'll talk about those, and this is a very important thing as far as, you know, peptide vaccines are concerned. You, uh, pep the vaccine as such, we know, I mean, uh, the vaccines which are classical vaccines, they have some inherent problems. So what we have, what we are, everybody is trying to look for is a kind of a peptide-based vaccines. Thereby, we have to find out the kind of regions on the protein which can bind, which, which cannot bind. So by using any kind of a computational technique, in, in silico technique, can we, you know, predict these binders and non-binders? Particularly, we did the effort this time for HLA class two. This is what I has already talked about, the importance of this. There are a lot of web servers are available which are sequence-based. You give the sequence, you can find out B cell, T cell epitopes from there. You can make a prediction. So many times there is a paper by a group, uh, I didn't put the reference over here, but that shows that if they have taken a number of, you know, such proteins, they have gone for kind of alanine scanning for that. They found that many of the various prediction servers, they give present different results when compared among themselves for the same data sets. And also, they, it adds to the more of a confusion than, a, than of a conclusion. So is it because of the sequence-based kind of a problem? We are taking only the, considering the sequence. Does the structure has a, play, a role to play over there? So we try to, uh, you know, look at the structures. We wanted to have develop a, basically a structure-based uh, uh, approach to find out whether a, a particular peptide can be treat, uh, when be termed as a binder or a non-binder. And uh, this is the effort in whole developing this uh, pipeline. And what we did is we looked at the crystal structures which are available for which the immune receptors, we, which, which, for which we have HLA, sorry, for which we have HLA binder structure and which is co-crystallized with peptides. There are about 30 co-crystal structures available in the PDB with the size of less than 10, not less than 10, 10 mers. We wanted to have something bigger one. This is the classical uh, size of the peptide which gets bound to HLA type 2. And 20 were presented on, uh, you know, DR 
four were presented on HLA type DP, six were presented on DQ. So all this, with the, all this information, we, simple thing is that we try to look at their phi psi angles. The simple information for each and every peptide we try to get and try to see, is there any consensus? Is there any consensus between the phi psi angles of these amino acids? We tried to look at that. We did some, uh, you know, plotted some graphs. We found that there is a structural conservation is there, but there are certain differences. Those differences are quite obvious if you take 11 more kind of a peptide. And uh, if you see, uh, if you draw their structures and you have a kind of a, uh, go for a B factor analysis from the PDB, you will find there is a, syndicates lot of mobility on the flanking regions. Core regions or the proximal regions are basically not showing much of a variation. But still, within, with this information, can we use this phi psi information and develop some kind of a prediction method? Answer may not be yes, we wanted to uh, 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 dig a little deeper onto this. So what we did is, we also look, try to look at the core. For the core, we have taken nine more binding core and try to see what is happening at the core. We found that there are high flexibility on the flanking regions, and but on the core, what we are able to find, there is some kind of a similarity is there in the psi angle, except at the position number three, as compared to phi angle. Phi angle shows more of a variability in the core. So this was also kind of a, not giving us a very clear picture. We thought, let us look at these amino acid types from the from their physical chemical properties. We def, we segregated them in terms of their you know uh, physical chemical properties, charged ones, uncharged ones, bulky citrines, and stuff like that. We segregated them, and then we tried to compute what are their phi psi angles. So uh, are we able to get any information out of, out of that? If you look at the psi, more or less, all these dots, you will find not much of a variability is there. Peptide assumes a kind of a linear shape. It's a clustered, but in case of uh, uh, phi angles, you'll see the variation in these dots are quite high. There is some conservation, but variation in generally very high if you take all these peptides into consideration. And this uh, shows kind of a much larger variability is there between the phi values, even if it does not follow the rule of amino acid type, it does not follow the rule of their physical chemical properties, so what does it do? Can we, I mean, uh, uh, do something about that? What we thought is then, idea was that why the sequence-based methods are failing? Why do we require structure-based method? Can we get, how we can get a linear peptide? Suppose we start with a peptide and uh, try to have a structure using ab initio techniques, maybe molecular dynamic simulations. Can we get a linear peptide that will fit into that HLA-2 molecule? So we don't know answer to that. So what we did is, we analyzed the CLIP. CLIP is an invariant chain peptide, which comp uh, anti any antigenic peptide has to compete with it to remove it so that the ant antigenic epitope can fit onto that. So we try to see whether by using docking only, if we compare the energies of the CLIP versus antigenic epitopes, for which already the structure is there. Already they are, they are co crystals, we undock them and re try to redock them. We try to see whether the redocking will be really effective in uh, you know, putting the case together or what happens with respect to CLIP. So what we found is for about you know, uh, 26 out of 30 cases, available cases, we found that antigenic peptide has a much stronger affinity as compared to CLIP. It means they'll be able to replace the CLIP these antigenic peptides can bind to uh, HLA molecules. Also, we looked at their RMSD values and compared it with the crystal structure. Their original crystal structure values and the, now what they have adopted after the docking, and there we find the low range of RMSD values, but if we try to compare it with the clip itself, then we find there is a much larger variation. It can be maybe because of the HLA type, allomorphs that we are going to use, but definitely, this is statistically fine. There is a, if we do the RMSD comparison between the clip peptide and the redock it compared to the same peptide, then we find in the clip there is a much more variation as compared to the uh, antigenic peptide itself. So we, what we are trying to establish is can molecular docking be used here 
to you know uh, do this kind of a uh, experiment or this kind of a doc, uh, this kind of a finding out the binder and non binder so what we did is we thought that if we have antigenic peptide how we can get the linear structure usually people what they do is they go to prediction program like pepfold which are kind of a you know based on the sequence based on some kind of a ab initio techniques they try to find out the give you the predicted structure of the peptide so usually from the pepfold you get the structure of the peptide but that structure will that be okay structure for the msc to bound because all this reaction of binding to msc or la hla2 it occurs in the lyso uh, lyso endosomal compartment their ph is 4.5 does the initio te uh, techniques take care of that usually that answer to that is uh, we don't have the answers or answer is no basically uh, there is no specific ph based initio prediction so what we did is use the md simulations and try to do the look at the structure of the these antigenic peptides and at the uh, ph 4.5 and compared with ph 7 we try to look at how the structural changes are happening and what is the change that is there so we find what we find is there is a rise in net charge dis, uh, distribution at the stick ph and stick ph it also linearizes the peptide structure as compared to the structure that we get from ab initio fold like for, from pep fold so significant lessening of the structural deviation is there it is more closer to the crystal structure so ideal is we should be able to get the structure as close to the crystal structure as much possible so by md simulation what we found is the structure is very close to the crystal structure not uh, the pep fold one was not near to that so in 26 out of 30 a cluster representative of the md peptide md simulated peptide at this ph or rmsd of with the crystal structure of less than 5 upstrom so but there are certain variations in that but back by backbone fold remains the same so after that what we did is we uh, we thought that we should also compare it with already known peptides already uh, experimentally determined peptides like from the pride database we have taken the binders as well as the non binders and then try to check subject it to the same protocol of md simulations we did the uh, use the pep fold we did the simulations uh, at uh, ph7 we did the simulation at ph uh, 4.5 then we try to look at what are the phi psi variations are there which one are are they going to linearize it is it going to be close to the uh, experimental value or not so this is what we have found out by uh, looking at the you know affinity scores by doing molecular dot docking experiments and what we are able to find is overall there is a low efficacy of non binding test peptides so we have taken these test peptides i think the red one are the kind of non binders and blue one as the binders so these this peptide data set was taken from the already known database known uh, uh, database uh, of uh, these uh, with the immunogenicity, immunogenicity properties and then we subjected it to the molecular docking so this is what we found that it is able to differentiate between binders and non binders by using the molecular dynamics simulation and using this protocol what we followed and what we found is that if we Uh, compare it about 77.7% of the uh, these peptides known binder uh, binder test peptides they had better efficacy as compared to hla alomops so though, though our data set is small for you know checking this uh, uh, md simulation based method but still whatever we had we did and try to say that this method of structure based you know prediction can work here and then can we can predict the uh i mean uh, the docking or the structure of the uh, binder to the hla type 2 also we did this experiment with the uh, you know validated immuno dominant sars cov 2 uh, cd4 epitopes that bind to hla drb1 and what we found is the peptides are linear and this stable efficacious binding is has been observed so this is the additional information that we did during that time uh, when the covid was the problem we were doing these experiments that time and then uh, we were able to see that this is kind of also showing good binding 
and the energy value as compared to the clip was good enough. So in a sense that if we use the pH mediated MS empty simulation coupled to a docking, it can defi definitely kind of a differentiate between the binders and the non-binders. And based on this, what we, we are giving this strategy, the steps are the same that once we develop the, uh, we take the overlapping peptide fragments, we subject them to MD simulations in the uh, pH, uh, SDIC pH environment, followed by clustering, trying to find out the representatives, take those representatives, dock them, and then try to evaluate whether they can be binders or non-binders. The reference peptide can be taken as a, as a clip peptide, and the, with that reference, we can check whether this, is, uh, this particular antigenic peptide is going to get bound or not. So this, these are the, this is the, another pipeline that we have developed or uh, we have uh, made. We try to, I mean, uh, put it on a, you know, in a web mode also, but still MD simulations are the kind of bottleneck which takes longer time to give you the results. So we are still looking at these methods. We are in touch with, you know, computer, computer people so that we can get this pipeline on and thus uh, basically a web server can be developed for this. I think uh, that's it. These are the contributors, mainly Dipayan Chatterjee was the person who did all this work and others supported uh, this and we collaborated with the wet lab people also and we try to actually uh, have the peptides and try to do some experiments also but we could not uh, get them through because of the COVID person has to move and then this experimentally, I mean this cannot be experimentally tested, the epitope prediction work. So this is what we could do and this is what I could share. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Balvinder Singh, for such an informative lecture. Now it is open for the questions. Any question? So uh, yeah. my question is related to the recent uh, breakthrough of uh, having an alpha fold uh, tool as well as the database of uh, more than 200 million protein structures. So, so in context to that, uh, do you think these predicted structures are uh, good enough for drug designing or like uh, you need to be very subjective while selecting uh, these targets? Yeah, I mean, this is a I mean, good question in a sense. Uh, there is a lot of debate is going on. But definitely we should welcome whatever computational biologists or computational uh, computer people have done. Uh, that's a wonderful job in a sense that uh, we are able to advance our computations to that extent that we will be able to predict the, any protein uh, structure that will be coming up. But still, I think we have also tried to compare in our lab that structure that we predicted few years back were the same. We found that Definitely they were same, and even in the active side, the side chains were the, quite good enough. But there are certain structures, certain regions are there. Still we are looking at probing it more. And uh, we're trying to look at, I think for the membrane protein also, they came up with uh, you know, another uh, version of that, uh, of the predicted structures. But I think still the game is on. We are looking at the structures. I mean, there could be some differences, but people are talking about those. But uh, still yet to be confirmed by actually carrying out the, you know, X-ray diffraction experiment or NMR experiments and stuff like that. Thank you, sir, for the talk. Uh, I have just one question that uh, for a classification into binders and non-binders. You have used a pH mediated MD. So at pH also have uh, effect on protein structure. Yes. So how uh, we can relate a binder and non-binder in different pH? So actually why we have used pH is because the MSC, when it binds in the cell, it binds in a lysosomal kind of a, you know, environment, lysoendosomal kind of a compartment. There it is, these, you know, uh, peptides are presented to MSC. 
If you take the peptide structure as pH 7 and peptide structure at pH uh, 4.5, there is definitely a charge difference is there. What kind of a charge distribution is there on the peptide? In addition, small amount of you know, conformational changes are also there. 